Hey friends, it's the Drive to School podcast. I'm Pastor Goodman, the content executive here at Higher Things. And joining me again today is, is my buddy. It, it's, it's Pastor Matt Richard. How are you doing? Hey, good to see you, Harrison. Good to see you too. How you been doing? You know, just, uh, I think mentioned last week, I had that, that cold and just trying to get over it. I don't know, but it's supposed to snow this week, I heard. So why not, right? Maybe that'll so, shake some of it out of there at least. Um, like yeah. the, the cold weather just sort of rips open lungs. That feels so good when it hurts <laughs> outside. It's time for that again. I was in Texas for uh, the last like three years. And so coming back up north, uh, yeah, we, we, we get to sort of have some of that. But at least um, it, it it kills all the bugs and things like that. So it's not. Yeah, so yeah. I think it's supposed to be like 10 degrees next week. So we're going from 70 degrees yesterday to like 10 degrees next week. So I don't know, whatever. It bring, yeah. bring it on. It's North Dakota. We'll be grumbling before we know it, complaining about the winter, and that's it's the way it goes. Good to have new things to complain about. It's the the spice of life. <laughs> um, all right, so we've been tackling. What does Jesus have to say about all this stuff? Um, I, I got maybe a, a sensitive one today, but uh, I think probably a really important one. What does Jesus say about those with special needs? Yeah, that's that's that's, that's a great question. You know, we, we think about how does Jesus treat little children? Let's just start with that. Um, I'm thinking, was it Matthew chapter 18? Uh, the little children are coming onto him and, and the disciples are basically like, you know, let's get rid of these ankle biters, these little nuisances. I mean, they, when you think about children, they can't contribute to society. I mean, all they do is they suck your wallet dry and take your energy and they're just, mm -hmm. they're a burden, right? And, and so the disciples are like, let's, let's just get rid of these children. And Jesus says, do not what? Uh, do not uh, withhold the, the kingdom of God from these little ones. Um, permit them to come unto me. And, and Jesus longs to be with these children. And so then he takes this child and he displays that this is what great faith is um, when we look at the, the child. And so when we think about the kingdom of God and we think about the church itself, it's not the super apostles that we esteem as, as wonderful and magnificent. It's those that are what beggarly poor. Uh, it's those who are in need, those who can receive. And so we think of the special needs. We think of those who uh, realize that they can't give it their all in life, let's just say, whether it's physical or mental disability. Uh, mm -hmm. Jesus says, no, it's okay. I'm for you and uh, you can receive my good gifts. And um, so when we look at the special needs, in fact, I, I can think about some of the different uh, individuals in my life and, and as a pastor, I can think of a guy named James down in uh, California. James was wonderful. And uh James was, man, he was one of my heroes. And uh, every time I talked to James, James was all about Jesus, Jesus for him. And because uh, James knew he couldn't do much on his own, uh, but he definitely knew Jesus did a lot for him and did everything for him. And so when I look at that church in California, the person that I remember the most, I mean, this has been, you know, almost 15 years ago, the person that sticks in my mind that I'll remember the rest of my life is James, brother James, we called him. James knew Jesus and Jesus knew James. And James was confident in that Christ would what resurrect him at the last day and make all things right. Absolutely. And this is this is maybe the, the better story to tell. Um, I, I think everybody sort of inside of Christendom, I would hope at least, would, would sort of recognize that the need for, for charity, the need to support um, our, our brothers and sisters in Christ who, who might not be able to always care for themselves. But we talk about Christianity always sort of in the form of doing that. And so good Christians care for those with special needs. Uh, but you know who doesn't get to actually be a Christian then? Are the ones with special needs, the ones who actually right. need to receive the care. Um, if, if at the very best, those who are, are uh, differently abled or, or have special needs, or um, if, if they are the object lesson of, of a faith instead of those who have faith themselves, you've done something wrong. Right. Well, I mean, think about, you can go back to Mary and Martha, right? I mean, the Mary, and there's nothing wrong with Martha. I mean, this, this story of Martha, she's busy and she's working and she's, uh, um, she's a doer. I, I I tend to be a Martha in a lot of ways. Um, I just, I like to get things done. I like to keep active. I don't like to sit still. Mm -hmm. um, but then we look at Mary and then Martha kind of criticizes Mary. She's sitting on Jesus's feet. She's not doing anything. Right. Uh, but Jesus says what Mary desires the better thing. And so uh, we, we look at Mary, we look at, um, my goodness, all the individuals, we think of blind Bartimaeus, we think about um, all the people with the different ailments, the lepers, and we think of the uh, uh, the, the guy who had dropsy, um, all the different uh, uh, physical disabilities that they had, um, they are portrayed in the scriptures as uh, being these magnificent heroes of the faith, crying out, Lord, have mercy. And so we look at them and, and we see them and it's like, my goodness, that's, that's, that's the essence of Christianity is being a beggar, is receiving, is crying out, Lord, have mercy. And so, like I said, I, 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 I can learn a lot. I still can learn a lot. I haven't seen him in many years, but, but Brother James, uh, he had a lot to teach me. Uh, about dependence, about uh, vulnerability. Um, this kind of goes back to 
also the Beatitudes, which is going to be coming up for uh, All Saints Day coming up here as we we, we uh, actually had All Saints Day the other day, but we're going to be looking at it this following uh, Sunday here, this coming Sunday. And uh, Jesus says, blessed are the what? The poor in spirit. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are the mourning. The blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, uh, for they will be what? They will be comforted. They will be blessed. Uh, they will be uh, fed. And so uh, these beggarly hands that we have um, need to be filled. And Jesus does uh, rejoice by filling them with good gifts. It's, it's fantastic. And there, there's such a, an, an astounding promise that's made to us uh, that we, we almost have to test at it to see if it works. Our old Adam can't help but sort of poke at it and say, that can't actually be. That, that God would not only forgive our sins, but tie us to life everlasting. That he would raise us from the dead. That he would, he would name us his children. And so we look at it and we say, all right, so how do I know it's working? Because... I'm still like this. And, and so uh, you and I, we, we tend to want to measure our hands or our hearts. So like, do you, do you feel better? Um, or, or, or have you changed your life? And have you done better? And it's problematic when you start to measure the, the things that faith uh, is received by instead of the thing that gives the faith. Um, we, we look to then the promises of the Holy Spirit. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. It, it's not sort of rooted in how much you can memorize or understand. It, it's rooted in how much you've been given to trust in. And this is a simpler thing. It's not rooted in, you know, what you have accomplished, uh, but but what has been done for you in your baptism. Uh, we, we have to simply look at the gifts that are given to us uh, other than, uh, instead of uh, rather the results that they might produce. Yeah. You know, um, think about it this way. I, I know we often hear this in, in American Christianity, that Christianity is being the hands and the feet of Jesus. And so we, we exemplify, if we're going to take a part of our body to demonstrate what the uh, Christian church is about. It's always like hands and feet being active. But I would say that the better way of looking at the church is one big ear. And what does an ear do? An ear receives. That's all it does is receive. It hears. Jesus says, you who have what? Hands and feet? No, it's you who have ears. Let them hear. And so well, I said this a while back here at St. Paul's. We were talking um, um, behind uh, behind the scenes, I guess you would say, between, between the services and Bible study and so forth, visiting the group of people. And I just was co commenting on on what an active parishioner of St. Paul's looks like. And I got this couple, um, we'll just call them, you know, Bob and Susan, okay, just for, for the sake of anonymity. Uh, Bob and Susan, I said, they're they the most active people in our church. They're active members. Well, what do they do? Um, Bob and Susan, they come, she's in a wheelchair. They come every single service and they receive the word and sacrament. And, and, and what does she do? Um, she can't serve in any kitchen committees. She can't serve behind the scenes, but she writes little cards and she prays for people. And uh, I would say that is a perfect example of an active member of our church, actively receiving the word and sacrament. She's there, her and her husband are there every single single time. And, and even though she comes in a wheelchair, she's there more consistently than anybody else when it's even snowing itself. She's there to receive. That's an active member, an ear, somebody receiving, somebody partaking of the good gifts of God. Great. So um, I, I guess maybe one more hard question since we're, we're on the topic. Um, you, you sort of held up... Uh, so many of the, the people who, who were burdened uh, by the pangs of sin in this life, by the, those who had dropsy, those who were blind, those who were deaf, um, and, and you pointed to them as the heroes of the faith, but they get healed. Um, what does it mean to, to bear a cross in this world, and what will it be like in the resurrection? Well, that's the hope of the resurrection. I mean, that's the hope for, for all of us. Um, we just, gosh, I, I, I just, I think of the hope of the resurrection that uh, everything will be put back together again, that these bodies uh, with pain and death and struggle and suffering, um, it will be, it'll be lifted. It will be, I will give them 2.0 bodies, brand new bodies. Um, I, I think of my sister, my sister uh, uh, deals with some physical ailments actually quite a bit. Um, and I, I, I think she'll be okay me mentioning this, but she has, I think it's like three or four metal toes, two metal knees, metal hips, metal elbows. And she just got a brand new metal shoulder. And, um, uh, I think I've said this to her before, but if not, I mean, it's good for her to hear that she's one of my heroes. Um, I see her, all the suffering that she's gone through and that suffering, what it does to us as, as human beings, even though we don't choose our suffering, the suffering chooses us, that suffering has a way of driving us to dependence. It has a way of driving us to receive God's gifts and to rest in what's been given for us. And then it also points us to the hope of the resurrection that that Jesus says in this life, everything will be just a little while. I mean, he's love, love these words. He said, it'll just be a little while. It'll be a, compared to eternity. It is a little while. We're going to blink and we're going to be what? Buried six feet under. And then we're going to be raised from the grave, uh, body and soul reunited again, uh, never to perish, never to, never, never to cry, never to feel any pain, not, not to feel fear and doubt, but to what? Run and skip and jump uh, in the midst of Jesus. I, I cannot wait 
I cannot wait at the great eschaton, at the very great eschaton, when I get a brand new body to see my sister, we're going to giggle like little kids and we're going to run and jump and give a high five. And I just, I, I cannot wait to do that with my sister. Uh, that's the glory of, of Christ that he makes all things new, uh, not only for this eternity of our soul, but the eternity of our bodies never to perish again and not to cry and have pain and sorrow. Uh, it's just, it's just glorious. It's, it is a hope. And that hope is what sustains us uh, in the midst of this veil of tears, knowing it's only a little while. And that's something where we can all comfort each other, uh, that Jesus is not going to forget us in the grave, and Jesus is not going to leave us with our condition, and that uh, he will resurrect us at that great last day. It's it's important to sort of frame it in this this um, well in Christ. Um, there's there's sort of a inside of the the special needs community. There's a, a lot of sort of a, a desire to sort of not view the disability as, as um, something that makes you less, and that's good. That that's right and proper. Um, but then what do you have to say to it when um, when it might be taken away in the resurrection? Um, and, and in all of it, it it's a question for humanity um, to, to be seen it as as fully human but but for us our identity is found in our baptism that, that you are fully human you are fully um, actualized you you have all of your value in the fact that Christ has bled and died for you not in what you can do not in what you can be not in who you are but as one who would receive the kingdom from God who would win it for you with his death and resurrection um what we then deal with in the resurrection we're not taking away an identity but we're, we're finding the proper one we're looking to our baptism all of us, because this is where all of us uh, find find our worth, find our value, find who we are. Um, that that means that that if if this is yours to bear for a little while, then Lord sustain you. And and if something else is your cross to bear, Lord sustain you. But the hope is the resurrection, and that He does and He did. Yeah. Well, I mean, just just this whole idea. I mean, uh, Paul says this: there's neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free. Mm -hmm. um, that that justification is given on the basis of Christ, not on the basis of our status, our sex, um, our social standing, and I would even add to our physical abilities. Um, you know, we, we we think of this that this grace is given in Christ and by Christ and through Christ, and so there's no partiality in this gospel. It's for every single person. And so often in life, I mean, we always we always go the way of, of, of our power and control and, and manipulation and, and uh, you know, whoever's first in line gets the first goods. And, and um, this is all of life. Uh, life is very competitive. Um, you know, in a sense, you know, not, not that I'm trying to affirm Darwin, but there's this idea of the survival of the fittest, which we do see that. I mean, it's, it's you, you got to fight to make it in this life. Um, and we sometimes carry that over, per, you know, unfortunately, maybe even to the Christian faith that those that fight, that those are at the top of the line, those that are at the top of the uh, king of the mountain um, are, have first dibs on it. Um, but it's not with Christ. It's not how it works. It's given freely. Every single person given freely, given and bestowed upon them. And uh, it's for empty beggarly hands, uh, whether you're Jew or Greek, slave or free, male or female, disabled or not, we are all one in Christ. And at the very end of the day, Christ resurrects every single one of us and makes us all new uh, with renewed bodies, um, absolutely perfect for all eternity. God be praised. Pastor Matt Richard, thanks so much for joining us on the Drive to School. Yeah, good to see you, Harrison. You too. Talk to you later.